Hello everyone, I80386SX, and this is something that I found at the bottom of a box. Uh, very, very small notebook. It's a Panasonic Tough Book, which, uh, <laughs> if you know the Tough Book line, this is not a very tough notebook. I originally got this thing uh, from an Aflac dealer, or Aflac agent, if you will. Yeah, the Affleck offices in central Wisconsin had a love for these Panasonic Tough Books, and not exactly sure why that was. I'm, maybe they got them for free or something, or you know, a lot of companies back in the day, they, at the end of the three-year or five-year period, out they go. Company buys new stuff, and... And who knows, a refurbisher company or maybe Affleck themselves maybe offers these things for cheap or free and companies like to take them up. Where the Panasonic Tough Book line, the ones that are actually the rugged variety, are often used in police cruisers or military operations or even firefighters may even use them. I'm not exactly sure, I'm, but it's mostly like emergency and military personnel that uses the true blue tough books and they're actually rugged and you can run them over with just about anything or drop them off of a building and the computer will still function or you can even leave the thing in a lake and it may or may not still turn on you do that to this one or any other normal computer forget it it's going it's dead so let's see what the aflac office gave me years ago and let's go take a look at this Panasonic CFW4. It is designed for Windows XP. It does have a DVD player slash CD burner. I don't know where exactly that would be in the moment. But before we go into that, let's see what's on the side here. We have VJ, what appears to be for something for a docking station an SD slot for an SD card, card bus. And over here, we have a power button, the wireless switch, which we can turn that on. I don't know why that's turned off, but a couple sound. And, well, that opens the CD DVD drive. So I think we found one of our two answers. Couple USB ports, although one of mine are broken. And behind door number one, we have a modem slash network card, Ethernet. And nothing behind here. The laptop itself is very light, so maybe that's why the Aflac companies like them so much. Underneath here, you have one memory slot. It is a DDR2. Although my slot I know, or this slot that I know of, is bad. Or one of these tough books had a bad RAM slot, and I think it was this one. Because I, I used to work on Aflac's equipment quite often. And I believe this was the one with the bad RAM slot. And of course you got your battery. Which was replaced at one time, and it looks almost brand new. So that's cool. So it may actually hold a charge. I'd be impressed if it did. And I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Probably a bad idea. Help if I put it in the right way. That's much like, that's much better. And underneath here is your hard drive. I don't remember if it's a SATA or IDE drive, but we'll find that out soon enough. Another nice thing about most of the tough books are, well, it's a catch-22. The tough book AC adapters don't really, they're not the easiest to come by. There's a lot of generics out there, but if you're like me and you have the IBM AC adapters from your T40s, your T30s, and late 90s IBM ThinkPads, guess what? You in luck. Voltage is the same, the amperage is more than meets the specifications, and away you go. And 
battery indicator light does indicate that it is charging. So let's turn this thing on. And now the question is, did I do anything with it between the time I got it and today? Power light turns a nice, cool looking green color. It's a Centrino. It does have Windows XP on it. And it does look like that I did redo this machine or put a new copy of Windows on it so that way none of the Aflac stuff would be transferring over to my hands. I thought I would do anything bad, but wiping proprietary and sensitive data, especially with insurance, it's a big deal. So, all right, under the hard drives, that's the first thing I literally clicked on. We go down to properties. It looks like it's a 60 gig drive. And survey says, well, I don't know Toshiba part numbers all that well, but that could be either or. And I'm kind of impressed. Granted, this is a Panasonic, this uh, Matushita brand, and I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. It is part of Panasonic, but I'm glad to see genuine Panasonic products make it in a laptop like this. So let's find out what this hard drive is. It is a GAX, which is an IDE drive. That's one of the things that I really didn't care for as much in the Panasonic world is that they were a little bit behind on the technology in specs wise. And I get it for the military grade ones. Maybe they have to be a little less powerful because, well, heat and whatnot, but all right, here we go. So we got a Pentium M 1.2 gigahertz processor, 504 megs of RAM. So nothing impressive by any stretch of the imagination. Really can't do much of anything in the modern world with this machine. Oh, well, that's... Battery holds charge. Not bad. So, Microsoft's battery. Nothing special there. Hard drive. And, well, that kind of gives you a, a mirror into what we have here. Looks like a 915 chipset. We got a Panasonic. It says it's USB. That's interesting. Intel hard drive controller. It's got a soft modem in it, but there's one little piece of this I do remember now. Is that this uh, system, if you use the fake dial up or the dial up tutorial used on my channel here. Uh, using a Ubuntu server in a Linksys PAP2T box, this system is compatible and will connect using dial-up. So that is one little useless thing I do remember about this machine. And we got a card bus adapter. Doesn't say what that Pentium is beyond that. And I am, last but not least, I don't think the sound card's anything spectacular. Legacy audio drivers, Sigma Tel C Major audio. So it looks like your standard run-of-the-mill sound card for the time. And it says USB 2.0 on it. Unfortunately, one of my ports are USB 0 at this time because it broke off. I really wanted to. I suppose I could replace the motherboard on this, but I really don't want to. But last but not least, we need to find a disc for this thing and see if the disc will in fact read. So let's go find the first disc that I've literally found in this office is an Outlook 2000. So the eject button lights up all nice cool and green and that answers that question. Let's 
Let's see what we get. I think that works just fine. One thing I will note, the touchpad here is not my favorite. It's really small, although I think it's still better than some of the modern ones out there today, but if you have bigger hands, this could be a very uncomfortable situation for you. But that's where external mice come into play. Oh, we have a problem. Windows installer service could not be accessed. All right, so well, I'm interested. For a tiny little machine, the keyboard actually is very usable. Uh, where is the Windows installer service? It just not started. It is manually. So let's see if we can start it. And, okay, that's interesting. Try it one more time. Or maybe try something that doesn't have Windows installer on it. I'm not sure how to, I want to go about this just yet. Might be something else in here we might be able to read. I have no idea what in the wild world's going on here. So, I don't worry about it. And to take the DVD out, simply grab the edge like so. And there you are. We found a sequel 2005 disc. Let's see if that reads. Oh, look at that. The little LED likes to glow when there's a disc in the drive. Does not like this disc though. So let's, uh, maybe our DVD drive is not as good a shape as I originally thought it was. And that's, or maybe the DVD portion of this drive is no good. I'm not exactly sure. We'll find out. Do you want to connect to a wireless network? So, wireless appears to work, but I'm not actually going to connect to anything here. Okay, we are going to be a potato today, I see. So my guess is maybe at one point this assembly was replaced with a CD-ROM only or just an exclusive CD-RW and not a DVD drive. So let's try and see if my little book of discs here from way long ago we can find something that is CD only. And there with me here, maybe with the magic video editing, I should do something here, but that's too damn simple here.
Office 2002 Enterprise Edition 2002. Oh, we found one more disc we can try here. I'm pretty sure that's a CD. Yep, that's working much better. And it's pure I misread that because this is actually Office 2003. Okay, it's reading it real quickly here. But it looks like we may run into the same roadblock with Windows Installer. And we don't need to spend time troubleshooting Windows Installer. So, well, that bombs out. Let's see. We had this uh, unplugged for about 10 minutes now. And, yeah, okay, so Windows Installer is finally bombed out, so let's do press OK to that. But, yes, yeah, battery life, if this is any indication at all, this is pretty darn good laptop and little 12 inch screen. It is pretty light. I don't know what the weight specification is on it, but maybe I'm starting to understand a little bit more why Aflac like these uh, machines. I'm not entirely sure, but screen resolution is not very good, but maybe comparable back in the day. Unfortunately, not useful today. Unless you want a retro machine like this, a lightweight one. And yeah, it's not too bad in the weight department at all. But parts are scarce for these, I can tell you that straight up. Unless you have the true military grade machines, you're not going to have a good time with this one. Parts wise, I mean right now this one's pretty good. But I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this notebook unless I can find the weight for it such oh okay so this is a 2.8 pound laptop so okay I gotta admit I'm impressed by that so I'm maybe we're starting to understand why the Aflac companies like these tough books now it's definitely not tough but it is light so maybe I should have called it light book or something that's that's on Panasonic and not Aflac so well, that's going to be it for me, I think. I'm going to wrap this up. And the Panasonic Toughbook CFW4 in a nutshell. If you have any questions, comments, constructive commentary that you want to put into this, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Who knows, maybe this laptop will turn up on eBay because I certainly don't need it. It looks like it's capable outside of a dead USB ports and the battery looks pretty much brand new so somebody might be getting a steal here so thank you again for watching